Me recording this, exactly one month from the beginning of free agency. So let's talk some rumors. What is up, Finn fans? Can tell by the title. Today we're going to be talking about rumors. The Miami Dolphins are involved in a lot. And I mean a lot of rumors, <laughs> whether it be trades, whether it be who they want in the draft, who they want free agency, what they're doing, who they like, who they don't like, all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about them all. Well, all of the ones that I can remember and I wrote down. It's a good amount. Say about six. I got six rumors that the Dolphins are linked to that I want to talk about. One of them is very big and you guys have already known what that title is about. But I didn't make that my title, and that is going to kind of coincide with that one rumor. Um, but we're going to talk about rumors, we're going to talk about trade rooms, all that stuff. But before I jump into that, let's get into trivia. Me recording this, it's Tuesday, February 18th. Like I said, exactly one month. March 18th is the start of free agency. March 16th is the start of the tampering window. So from the 16th to the 18th. Uh, teams can talk to each other, and that's where you, you'll hear a lot of like, oh, so-and-so is a uh, source to be in contract um, agreement with so-and-so, and this team is this team, and that person. It's a lot of agreed, but not done deal until the 18th. So from the 16th to the 18th, there's that tampering period, and the 18th, the start of the new year, that's when free agency happens. So like exactly a month for me recording this today, and for you guys tomorrow in the premiere, and watching this when you, every day you're watching this, you got about... 30 days? I think it's 30 days. So let's jump into, like I said, today's Tuesday for me recording this. You got trivia. Who led the 2017 Miami Dolphins in sacks with 10 and a half sacks? Should be super easy for you guys. Super, super easy for you guys. Again, who led the team in uh, 2017 with 10 and a half sacks? And then that Ansel, Ansel, what is that? That answer will be right before comment of the day. And the fact for you guys today on a Wednesday, the Dolphins were one of just three NFL teams in 2017 to play eight different rookies on defense. Pretty cool. Pretty cool if you ask me. So let's jump into this. Let's talk about some trade rumors. Let's talk about some rumor rumors. Let's talk about it. Now, we'll talk about the draft first, right? Ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of rumors coming out about the Miami Dolphins. Now, the Miami Dolphins have about 13, 14 draft picks, right? They have five in the first three rounds. Three ones, two twos, one three. And then they got one four, which is the comp pick, and then three fives, two sixes, one sevens. If I, I, there's probably three sixes. I'm going to talk about draft and what I want to do in the draft and what I'm going to do for you. That's a whole nother video. But Dolphins have a lot of draft picks, and they have a lot of draft picks in the first three rounds. A lot of draft picks in the first two rounds. So the Dolphins are the talk of the town. The Dolphins are who everyone keeps talking about. Oh, they're going to do this. They're going to do that. Also doesn't help that a lot of the media and a lot of other people link the Dolphins to one specific player, link the Dolphins to one specific position, and said that they were doing something for that one position. Now, at first it was Tua, and then all of a sudden it was like, hey, they can get Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow's doing really well. Hey, LSU versus Alabama game. It's whoever is, you know, is the better quarterback is going to Miami because Miami's purposely tanking. It was the whole scenario, right? So it all started with, I think this was about a month ago, where it came out. Miami Dolphins are talking to the Cincinnati Bengals about trading up with them. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Came out. Remember, a lot of you guys blow, blew up my Twitter, my Instagram, all that stuff. Dolphins, do you, you see this? Do you see this? And then if you go on these Facebook pages, you get all these other fans being like, posting it, posting it, posting. Do you see this? Do you see this? Dolphins talking to Cincinnati. I wonder how much they would have to give up to get up to number one. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. And then that slowly, if you guys know now, that slowly, slowly faded to nothing. Cincinnati's like, nah, we're not trading the first pick, or eh, maybe we'll trade the first pick, and uh, blah, 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 right? And then it was, Dolphins are in talk with the Cinc with uh, uh, Washington. They want number two. They want the second pick. Dolphins are in talk with them. Dolphins want to move up ahead of uh, Detroit, because Detroit wants to, uh, and this, this, and that, blah, blah, blah. Now, if the Miami Dolphins were serious about moving from five to two with Washington, 
it probably would be more than just going after Tua. Now, I know a lot of you guys like Tua. A lot of you guys want Tua. A lot of you guys hate Tua. And I say that, and then a lot of people are like, oh, I don't hate him. Not saying you specifically, but I'm telling you, go on some of these Facebook pages, look at some of the tweets I get. A lot of people hate Tua for no specific reason. It's just, it's funny to me. But if the Dolphins were to move up from five to two to get, get with the Redskins, I honestly don't think it'd be for Tua. If you want my God's honest opinion, don't be surprised if it's for Chase Young. Don't be surprised if it's for Joe Burrow. Because whoever, does, whoever Cincinnati doesn't take, and if Dolphins do trade up to two, which they ain't trading up to two, that's who the Dolphins would take. Um, but again, that rumor is going around for a while. If you notice that a lot of these rumors and a lot of these trade rumors with the Dolphins, they heat up, and then you give them a week, and they fade away. That's why... They, you know, it's that time of the year where all of a sudden the smoke screen starts to come out. A lot of the hearsay she says come out and all of a sudden, but it's called a smoke screen because all of a sudden it just fades away after a while, <laughs> just fades away. So then, like I said, so first it was Cincinnati. The Dolphins were moving up with Cincinnati and then a lot of Dolphin fans were like, if we had just lost the games, we wouldn't be in the predicament we're in. And if the Dolphins just knew what they do properly... Ridiculousness. And now, one of the things that's being talked about is the Detroit Lions. Detroit Lions and the Miami Dolphins are, are connected. Not only because of Matt Patricia and Brian Flores, and also now with the Giants, the three of them, three, four, or five, kind of have that connection of New England Patriots, but because of a quarterback situation. And that's another rumor. That is the, doesn't involve the Miami Dolphins, but that's another trade rumor. That's another rumor that's out in the NFL universe. So the, that the Detroit Lions want to trade Stafford. And then his wife came out and she tweeted out something and that was looking at houses in California, but then had to retract her tweet and then had to go on an interview saying no. And then all of a sudden it's like, no, we don't want to trade. It's a whole big debacle that happened, right? But there's that talk, right? Detroit Lions want to trade Stafford. There's that trade rumor. And then all of a sudden Dolphins are going to, you know, Dolphins could potentially get ahead of three or want three because they're afraid of the Lions taking Tua, right? But then Tua says he doesn't want to go to the Lions. He doesn't want to go to Detroit. This isn't not what he says. This is what people say. He doesn't want to go to Detroit. Detroit's cold. He wants to go to a hot weather team. He's from Hawaii, blah, 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 blah. You know, he played in Alabama. He wasn't cold in Alabama. So he doesn't want to go to Detroit. But then all of a sudden the Dolphins are like, hey, and again, this is what I'm going to talk about in about five seconds. We're not that sold on Tua. They put the, 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 but a funny thing is, and you'll notice this about all of these rumors that I'm talking about. Not once does the team come out and say anything, except for the whole Detroit Lions trading Stafford situation where the team literally comes out and said it. And same thing, I think with Cincinnati, I think there was another team that came out and said like, no. We're not doing anything. There's a lot of rumors. But the teams never come out and say it. So now all of a sudden, you know, someone comes out, writes an article, which I'm literally going to talk about, and I have two more things, and then we're we'll talking about it, that the Dolphins aren't sold on Tua. They have their eye on another quarterback. So then all of a sudden, it's like this mount, uh, cast, uh, cast and mount game. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's what we like to call dyslexia. That's what we like to call a cat and mouse game where the, the Lions are like, hey, we want two uh, Dolphins. You better trade with us or we're going to take two. And the Dolphins are like, meh, you can have them. We're not that interested in two. Uh, we're looking at another quarterback. Hey, we might not even be looking at a quarterback at all. There's a lot of, a lot of that, right? But then again, no team has said this. No team co publicly comes out and says these things. It's just a lot of people... Saying these things and saying like, oh, the Dolphins are this and oh, the Lions are this and oh, blah, blah. so there's that. And then there's the Todd Gurley trade rumors where, like I said in a, one of my previous videos, it, it wasn't like it's going to happen. It's more like the Dolphins have done this before where if you guys don't know, someone wrote an article saying the Dolphins should trade for Todd Gurley. See if they can pay off his $22 million in over two years. And see if the Rams will give the Dolphins a second-round pick. We'll give them a fourth. They should do that. So there's that trade rumor. Then Slay, the corner from the Lions, also talks about he doesn't want to be there anymore. So all of a sudden there's a trade rumor there. 
and a lot of time. Whenever a guy comes up and pops up, Dolphin fans are like, hey, can we get him? What do you think about him? What do you think about him? What, 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 what about this guy? What about this guy? So when Slay was talked about that he doesn't want to be there anymore and he wants to be traded, like Hargraves, he got cut, and a lot, you know, a lot of things start happening. We want talent on this team, and I get it, um, but it's got to fit the, the scheme. And a lot of what's happening with these corners, because there's a lot of corners becoming available in free agency, um, you got we got to see how the domino falls with Xavier Howard. Because say he does get suspended or say the Dolphins do move on with him from him. Which I'm not saying I want that to happen. I'm just preparing you guys for if it does happen, you're not as upset as I think you're going to be. Some of you guys, some of you guys are probably like, good. I don't think he's that good anyway. But that's where we go with that. We need to see where that domino falls, right? And then let's talk about the, the elephant in the room. This big fat elephant that's sitting in the corner of my room just munching on peanuts. I don't think elephants really like peanuts. It's like a cartoon thing. Armando Selguero of the Miami Herald. A lot of you guys told me to check this article out, and I did. Now I'm making a video about it. We're in an article essentially saying, this is what his article said. Miami Dolphins' current view on Tua, he says the whole name, but every time I say the whole name, I say Tua Tagovailoa, and then a lot of you guys say, no, oh, it's Tagovailoa, but then some of you guys say, no, it's Tagova. I don't care. Miami Dolphins' current view on Tua and Herbert might surprise you. So he writes that art. He writes this article about it, right? Now all of a sudden, everyone's like, "This article has been spread all over the place in the past couple of days." And to Armando, you it, you did your job well, my man. Because when you read the article, there's nothing new in there. There's nothing surprising in there. There's nothing in there that's like, "I'm surprised by this." He had the, the title, he clicked you in, and you shared it with the world. The two people who hate Tua, the people who don't want Tua on the team, are like, vindicated, look at this, look at all this. And the people who like Tua are like, well, did you read it, man? Did you read it? It's not saying much. So Armando did his job. He's a journalist, and he got his clicks. But if you read the article, I'm going to talk about the article, doesn't really say anything crazy, right? It says the Dolphins view Tua. Uh, Dolphins don't view Tua as a slam dunk. And they will evaluate him at the combine and the future. If the Dolphins view Tua as a slam dunk, if the Dolphins came out and said they want Tua, they view him as a slam dunk. He is the next best quarterback. He is the next best thing. We want him. It's, it would be the stupidest pre-draft plan I've ever heard in my entire life, right? And then, but all of a sudden... And the article says there's positive, increasingly positive view on Herbert. There's even some people in the organization, some people in the meeting rooms that are advocating for Her Herbert. Now, don't get me wrong. I haven't broken down my position players yet. I do that after free agency. For that whole month, I do uh, each position. I give you the top five players in that position in my mind. I break it down, do all that stuff. I haven't done that yet, but I do watch tape and I do. Her Herbert's not a bad quarterback. He's kind of somewhat linked to Tannehill, which some people who hate Tannehill are like, I don't want him. Her Herbert's not a bad quarterback. Six foot six, 237 uh, pounds. He's got a great arm, mobility. He has a hard time with his accuracy outside the numbers. So those, you know, out routes and the, the fades to the outside. He has a hard time with his accuracy there, but he's not a bad quarterback. You know, his, his senior bowl impressed the scouts for the Dolphins. So it's not surprising, right? Talks, he also talks about hint, uh, Ross hinted at, uh, at it in the um, Super Bowl that the Dolphins are weary of his hip injury, but also concerned with the future of his injuries. And this is what Steve Ross said at the, at the, before the Super Bowl. I've been down there to see him too as a great player. I just worry about his health. The coaches really make the decision on the draft choices. We have to look at what his health is and everything else and see what the alternates are. Duh. <laughs> That's what every NFL team is doing, especially ones that need a quarterback. You know, check two out at the combine. How's your physical? Will you be able to throw at the pro day? Will you be 100% week one? Not necessarily meaning he's going to play week one, but what, what, how are you doing? Oh, he's playing like crap. Well, good thing we've been scouting the other five quarterbacks in the draft. 
it's it's just it's this article is just a lot of hey here's something you already know it's like me coming up and saying breaking news boys and girls the sun comes up and then it goes down and then it's nighttime that is all <laughs> you're like who well, breaking news for this <laughs> No blank, Doug. I know these things. So, you know, good on him, though. I will say that to Armando. Good on him. You know, he, he got people clicking on it because I've seen this article all over the place. But he also ends the article by saying this. This is a snapshot of the thinking of the Miami Dolphins right now. Things can and will change before the draft. It's a long time before the draft. I think the draft is the 23rd of April. We're in the 19th of February. We got like two months. Lack can change. So, but good on him. What do you guys think? Comment below. Give me some other trade rumors and draft rumors and free agency rumors that you guys have heard that I haven't talked about. Comment below. Also, comment below. What do you think about this article? I know a lot. I already know some. who is the Tua fan, who's the Herbert fan, who is neither, who don't want to draft the quarterback, who wants Rosen, who wants to stick with Rosen going into 2020. I know. There's like groups of people. Uh, me, on the other hand, I just won't win, baby. So I don't care. Put the best guy out on that field and let's win, baby. So comment below. Let me know what you guys think. Before I get into the comment of the day, comment of the day kind of coincides with this video. So that's why I picked this video comment for the comment of the day. The trivia question. Who led the Dolphins in 2017 with 10 and a half sacks? Come on. It's Cameron Wake. If you didn't know that, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to hold on to your fan card for a little bit i'll give it back to you in about when the video's over I, I who am i to hold anyone's fan card i'm not the be all end all i made that in <laughs> this comment comes from david williams and he says to me i have a question how do you feel about the front office of this team and do you think we're heading in the right direction to be a championship caliber team hashtag comma of the day david thank you so much for the comment thank you for Hashtagging comment of the day. Um, this is how I feel about the front office. They have made stupid moves in the past. And I'm talking about Greer. Now, is it because of Tannenbaum was in there? Is it because Gase had his fingers in the pie? Because he had control of the 53-man roster? Tannenbaum had control? This is how, if you guys don't know, under the Adam Gase, Tannenbaum, Greer um, hierarchy uh, for those those three years from 2016 to 2018, 2016, 2017, 2018, Adam Gase had full control over the 53-man roster. Tannenbaum had full control over the contracts. Where does that put Greer in your mind? He could bring players in, but then Tannenbaum's like, Rah, and then Greer, uh, Gase is like, that's not my guy. So this past draft was the first time in my eyes, I feel like, and in free agency, he had his, his hands in the pie. I guess that's the saying. So when you ask me, like, what do I feel about the front office? I don't like things that were done three years, for the past three years. Like, there's some moves I liked, but then there's some moves I didn't like. I don't like the drafting of Gizicki and Smythe. I think that was stupid. I also, I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but I didn't like, and I warmed up to it, but I still wish they didn't trade for Rosen. Now, Rosen can end up being the greatest thing in the world, and I'm cool with that. I'm happy for that. But you guys know that I always said, you know, I'll give the man a chance, all that stuff. But I feel like we could have gotten a different, maybe better player with that pick that we gave for Rosen. But that's there's nothing I can do about that. Um, there's moves that were made. I, you know, I don't like some moves that were made. But I like what the plan is. I see what the plan is. I see how they stockpiled all these draft picks, how they have this money now, how they got rid of bloated contracts, they got rid of me, me, me players, and I like what they're doing. But I have gotten sucked in the sand before, and I'm not doing it again. Tony Sprano, we won the division, went to the playoffs, got our butts handed to us by the Baltimore Ravens. I was like 20, uh, 2009, that's our, I can't, and then 2016, we went to the playoffs, and all of a sudden we got snake bitten, and then all of a sudden, meh. so I, I'm, I'm done jumping on that hype train. I'm now a wait and see type person when it comes to this team. Like I said, that's why my expectations for next year, and I haven't even seen draft, free agency, the schedule, I haven't seen anything. I'm thinking like seven, eight wins, I'm good. 
I'm happy with that. Got growth and we'll go from there. I don't like setting myself on high expectations and because and, the fall hurts. The higher you are, the fall hurts. So when it comes to, like I said, how I feel at the front office, I'm a wait and see guy. I'm going to wait and see, see how they do, see how they do in free agency, see how they do in the draft, see how the draft pans out. Because with last year's draft, I like the Wilkins pick. Like I said, Rosen, we kind of, he was our second round pick. I'm, the jury's still out on him. I'm not making any assumptions on Rosen yet. I like some other picks uh, from last year, but we'll see. We'll see. But David, thank you for the comment. Like I said, be sure to comment below. Let me know how you think. I love commenting with you guys. I also like chatting with you guys over here in the premiere. How are you guys doing? Filling that up. Did you guys hit that like button yet? Because I notice a lot of times the views and likes are completely different. Be sure to hit that like button, guys. Come on, come on. But other than that, be sure to follow me on Twitter. Like I said, a month from yesterday, so like 30, 30 days from today, free agency starts. A lot of things are going to start happening this month, and especially the 16th to the 18th is the, you know, tempering period. A lot of news is going to break, so I break it on Twitter. Also, I'm doing more on Instagram. If you guys haven't noticed, be sure to check me out over there. Also, check out the BitBoys. We got some great games. Resident Evil 3 is coming out soon. So we started finishing Resident Evil 2. If you like that gameplay, go over there. Check it out. Hit the, hit the subscribe button. Other than that, give this video a thumbs up. You like the content. You like the grind. You like the channel. That's why you should hit the thumbs up. Other than that, if you don't, don't feel like you need to, but don't hit the thumbs down. I know who you are. There's one person who hits the thumbs down before the video plays. I know who you are. I don't know who it is. But be sure to hit that thumbs up if you like what you see. Check out theoffsock.com. Great site. Great content. Ton of dolphin content. I'm on there. TD's on there. There's a bunch of people on there. Go check it out. Other than that, hit the subscribe button. Like I said, guys, got a lot planned. Next video is going to be the breakdown of the secondary. No, no, that's it. Some of you guys were saying, what about the punters and the kickers? If you really want me to do punters and kickers, let me know. I'll ask again in my next video, but do you really want me to do punters and kickers? Like Sanders is going to be our kicker next year. I don't know if we're going to have the same punter, but it's two guys. It's going to be like a five minute video. So be sure to hit the subscribe button. Also, when you hit the bell, don't forget to whoop, 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 hit all. Cause if not, you won't know when I'm live. I'm going to be live Saturday and you won't know when the new video comes out like this one or the one that's coming out Friday. But other than that, I will see you guys Friday with my next video breaking down the secondary. And if news breaks, something big happens with the Dolphins, they decide to sign Hargraves or they decide to do something big, you get a video from me. Hopefully it's not while I'm at work because then you'll have to wait till five o'clock when I get out of work. But other than that, I will see you guys Friday with the breakdown of the secondary. But like usual, stay classy and fins up.